All right, everyone, welcome to the 2021 ARRL Field Day. We're just doing a little live action here, going to go around, see what everybody has set up. Field Day officially started at, uh, I believe, uh, 2, 2, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So it started about 15 minutes ago. Uh, we've had a couple of contacts already on satellite. We're getting the HF station ironed out, making sure we have a nice quiet noise floor, nice quiet uh, clean electricity going into the system so we can hear as many people as possible because if you can't hear them, you can't work them. I don't care what kind of amplifier you have. How much power you're running? If you got a nice, uh, if you got a nice high or a bad high noise floor, and you can't hear the person, no QSO, no QSO. So, those of you who are watching live or watching the recording of the video, um, ARRL Field Day is a, a, a yearly event, and uh, also. Um, semi-yearly if you count the winter field day which is uh relatively new but it's the summer one that I, I i find that gives us the most activity it's the most popular and field day is uh, a lot of things i think uh you know textbook is it's a, it's a contest to try to get as many contacts with as many other stations as possible um, outside of the test textbook, textbook definition of field day, it's a lot of things. Field days, uh, yeah, it's an event where we get to get together. We got a lot of guys just kind of standing around talking, catching up with each other. There's three or four guys here that I haven't seen in probably two or three years easily. And, uh, especially with COVID going on, we have, uh, everybody itching to get back out and see each other face to face again. It's, uh, it's a, um, just a, a, a natural human desire to want to get out there and, and connect to folks. So, and it's also a classroom. We get to learn new things. There's stuff you'll learn here that you just cannot find in a Google search. You know, troubleshooting equipment, setting up antennas. So it's a classroom too. It's a contest, it's a classroom, it's an event for all of us to kind of have some fellowship together, learn about radios, antennas, propagation, RF safety, um, electricity, even you can see here we have a solar array and we'll try to talk to Todd. He's a little busy right now doing some troubleshooting. Let's talk to Todd, K1KVA, a little later about the uh, solar array that he brought out. Then we have a nice uh, long wire antenna here. Probably can't see it on video, but it's uh, going up to the pole there and then to the pole way out there. Another one way out there, so. But the proper tuner and a nice quiet noise floor, they should easily be able to talk all over the world on a piece of wire. And that's really kind of the fourth thing that I didn't mention yet is it's also kind of a, a, a means of emergency communication, a, a scenario where if our area in Florida were to lose communications, we could still set up some kind of a uh, some kind of a hub to get comms in and out of the out of the region, out of the area. So uh, something like this would serve as a hub, and then you'd have. Um, for example, that short wide antenna you, you see up on the pole up there would cover a few miles to kind of get into the neighborhoods and things like that. So, actually, I did. In a major disaster, we'd still be able to communicate. There's nothing here that's relying on on um, the internet. Nothing here that's relying on uh, electricity. 
We are on our own. Exactly as we would be if there was a major disaster. So, gonna keep going here with just some live shots and maybe a few gaps in between of silence and all that. But uh, stay tuned. It's an exciting field day so far. We are down at um, Hogan Road Baptist Church in Jacksonville, Florida. They've uh, offered the property to us for the day for, for the next 24 hours. And that's going to be very helpful for us to have this large area. And thanks to them, thanks to Hogan Road Baptist Church. And if you're in the area, the event runs for 24 hours, so you can come by and visit us. All visitors are welcome. There's one in the truck for the truck box battery, too. Todd, you get it ironed out? Yeah. Well, to start with, we got that problem solved. Now it's time to uh, figure out why the amplifier's not working. Did oh. you see the amplifier in the truck? No, I saw I saw a tuner up there. Well, there's a 500-watt HF power amp in here. Oh, now I see it. charge controller on the other half of the, the yes. solar array. Yes, SGC, I see that. Yeah, yep, and the it's other. charging the three truck yeah. batteries that are in there. So for solar, what are we doing for total kilowatts here? Well, we have uh, 1,600 watts of panels, and we're making about 200 watts worth of electricity okay. because of the lack of sun. Now, in ideal conditions, I know solar panels aren't highly efficient, right? B between 12 and 20 percent, yeah. yeah. So... What we, we should be, if, this, if it was bright sun out here, we'd be getting uh, 1,600 watts, okay. or could, yeah. if the equipment was drawing it. And we're, we're getting somewhere around 150 to 200 with this shade that we've got here. Well, we got the batteries to kind of fill that buffer in in the meanwhile. These are helicopter starting batteries. They're military surplus. They're 24 volts, and there's 90 amp hours worth. And that ought to run the that ought to run the the, the ba that's only running the base station. Yeah. The batteries in the truck are running the the uh, power amplifier. Yeah. So, so you got the 60 cycle hum cleaned up. Sounds nice and quiet. Man. It's pretty good. I was just saying earlier that's very important because you can have the amplifier, you can have the great antennas, but if you can't hear them, you can't work them. You're, that's exactly right. So we're having a having a clean clean nice, electricity going in. Quiet electricity. Yep. Yep. We, I was just we, talking about that. We take our uh, electric grid for granted sometimes. I was just talking about that too. <laughs> just well, talking about that. Well, let's see. If we can't make yep. a contact. Thank you. Appreciate it. So that's our HF station, and again, I'm going to kind of explain some stuff for people here because I know some people may be watching that are seasoned amateur radio operators that are interested in this stuff other people may be watching that don't even know what this is or what we're doing here and uh so that's an hf station with that long antenna i showed you earlier and this is the radio system here and uh it's very it's, it's as elaborate as it looks it's very basic you have a receiver a transceiver that transmits and receives it tunes different frequencies and depending on the time of day and the band conditions you could uh, talk all over the world quite easily and uh, we have a tuner over here. This basically makes the antenna uh, look good to the radio. And with this, we talk all over the world. It's, it's really a, a fun hobby and exciting. You never know um, if you have the radio, whether you're gonna talk to Lebanon, Tennessee, or Lebanon, the country. I got confused the other day on which Lebanon I was talking to. So. We're going to step over to another station that we have going here, and this is uh, satellite communications. And believe it or not, amateur radio operators commonly um, communicate through satellites. We have satellites that are designated just for us, and some satellites that we're more of a secondary operator on. Uh, one of the new, more popular satellites, and by definition it is a satellite, is the International Space Station. So when it goes around, we have a couple things we can do there. They have what, what's called slow scan TV, and it's basically um, pictures. So if you're used to sending a, a picture via text message, well, this would be a great way to send a picture if the internet went down or you had no other way 
to uh, communicate. And then, of course, voice communication. Same thing you would do uh, with a satellite phone, but um, using amateur radio. And no monthly fees. That's the best part about that. So. I'm going to try to step in here in a minute and get an interview with um, Paul Locke. Paul Locke's running the satellite satellite um, setup today. Runs for like an hour. So that's the only thing about this the satellite. You'll see it when it comes up, and you'll hear these deep fades. How long do you usually get the signal? So that's higher up, so you're going to get a 15, oh, yeah. good 15, 20 minute pass where everything in lower Earth orbit will be, you know, oh, that's nice. Tolerance of information on time. Paul, we'll kind of uh, tell us about the satellites. Uh, I kind of explain that we're talking on satellites, but that's all I've explained so far. Yeah, so we're, we're here at Field Day. We're, we've got a. I Give us your seven. call sign, too. I've been forgetting everybody's call yeah, sign. KB4, Paul, KB4 PML. Okay, that's right. I remember. Yeah, we've got a 9700 in the truck. We've got a, a laptop running SAT PC32 with the newest version. Control all the Doppler shift and basically when the satellites pop up, it automatically loses the frequency. So all I have to do is point the antenna. The antenna today, we're using an old Aero 2 antenna. It's a UHF VHF Yagi. And we've got some custom cables. These are LMR 240 for the lowest loss, about 10 feet in length. Going to the back of the radio, and uh, we're about to do an RS-44 pass in about a little less than 10 minutes. And you got a um, slow scan from the space station today? Yes, we did. We've had uh, two pictures from the space station today, a downlink on 145.800. And I don't know if your uh, viewers can see this, but we can try to yeah, we'll give it a try. If not, I may make it the thumbnail for the video. So. <laughs> yeah. So it's got a little bit of noise on the signal, but if you want to, I can see what I can do with that. I mean, yeah, it's a little bright out here. So you can, oh yeah, that's working. But it was decoded with the phone using Robot 36. It was in PD120 mode. And uh, at the same time, I had a ham working the repeater on the space station. So we had two downlinks from the space station as it passed overhead. So what everybody's seeing here is a kind of a beacon that runs that sends this picture out all the time from the space station. Now, additionally, there's a repeater on the space, space station, right? Is it right. active today? It, it is active today. And, and you heard we, it today. We heard it today, and it was loud and clear, okay. and it was it was pretty I'm fun. I'm assuming you're looking to make a QSO on it today, right? We'll try. Okay. We'll try. It, with everybody at Field Day hitting the bird at the same time, it's really luck of the draw. Strong, strongest gets through. Yes. So, in the grand scheme of things, for satellite communications, this is a... Yeah, pretty simple it's, it's setup so simple. here. It is so simple. In fact, if you want to even get more simple for the FM birds, including the space station, you can just use a handheld like this. And uh, I usually put a, a headset on, have the clip-on microphone, put this on my belt, and I have this Yagi with a BNC connector goes right here. It has a diplexer inside. So if you have a dual-band HT, then you're in the business for all the, what we call the easy sats, FM birds. Not much Doppler you have to worry about. And you make a contact. And that, was, that old radio has been in my toy box for 20 years. So I pressed it back into service. It's not a high dollar specialty item thing. It's something you can get into for what? Two, three hundred bucks at the most? Oh, maybe? yeah, you can probably find those at AmFest for a hundred bucks. There you go. And the antenna is what? A hundred bucks too? That's right. So you could have a whole satellite set up for two hundred bucks, really. Yeah. I think so. Well, I think the diplexer for this may have been under 50, so about 150 to get you going. Or you find one used at a ham fest. Yeah, not bad. Or if you're really crafty, build your own, right? Some guys are doing it, but, you know, Aero, it's Aero's design, and if they're good people, I, I would recommend just going through AMSAT, and you get um, a little bit of a discount, and that money that you're saving, you actually kick it back to AMSAT for their fundraisers. Oh, okay. So to keep so win, amateur win. radio in space, we need to have donations. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, there's no monthly service fee, but uh, there's a reason there's no monthly service fee. <laughs> right. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks for your time. Alrighty. Uh, I'm going to continue to wander around here. We'll look at what's available. Uh, 
I got a little mobile setup. Okay, yeah, I got a little mobile setup to see you. Steve Valerius, this is the emergency group. Duvalarius.org is their website, and they uh, specialize in emergency communications, and they do a darn good job of it, too. That's, that's actually a good problem. Looks like we got still, the silliest, the silliest setup. We're ever. getting in the prone position here for the HF rig. Well, we got two completely separate solar arrays driving two separate sets of batteries. One's driving, one's charging to a 12 volt system, three truck, truck batteries to run the power amplifier in my truck. The other array's charging the helicopter batteries over here to run the inverter to run the 940. So it's kind of crazy. Oh, who was beeping? <laughs> it should. Step back here and take another look at the solar array. So. Todd said this is about 1.6 kilowatts, 1600 watts of power. Uh, in ideal conditions today, we're not really getting ideal conditions. It's cloudy today, but we're still getting a good bit of, of charge. And we've got the batteries to kind of act as a buffer to take care of us. John's our unofficial official safety guy, making sure we don't have any trip and fall accidents. That's exactly. I'm the safety officer. Eddie Fair is not going to sponsor this field day, right? That's it. Yeah. The grass. Yeah, I'm the safety officer for this year. Busting our heads open. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. And you set up the uh, UHF station, right? The UHF, yeah. VHF? The, the uh, talking station? Yeah. Okay, talking station. Brian did the K4VJS. Okay, good deal. Oh. Well, that is ARRL field day for 2021. Uh, trying to think of anything I haven't explained for the newcomers out there. I really want the video to be useful to the non hams as well as the hams and I've been talking about ARRL that's the American Radio Relay League and if I had to describe them they are advocates for amateur radio and they are there to assist you it's a not a government entity it's nonprofit so the FCC is basically our governing body from the from the US government um, in Canada I believe it's CE and other countries have their kind of ministry of communications and uh, ARL is not that. They're an advocate for for amateur radio officers. If you think of something like um, what the Ni National Rifle Association is to to uh, Second Amendment and gun enthusiasts, um, ARL is similar to amateur radio and they will do anything from keep track of frequency so we're not um you know colliding with each other so they kind of help organize the amateur bands so that certain activities take place in certain parts of the band so we can make the most efficient use of them they offer advice on uh, antennas antenna design they sometimes offer legal advice or they'll write legal advice. They have um, lobbyists that actually go to the FCC and go to Congress and help make sure that we preserve our frequencies that we can use because we need we need uh, we need frequencies that we can operate on. And unfortunately, over the past few years, they've uh, been taken up by monetary interests. So their website is ARRL.org. It's a great place if you're new to amateur radio or you're not an amateur radio operator and you want to learn how to become one or what a little more um, of what it's about. ARRL.org is a great website. So I'm going to leave it here for now. I think... Uh, had a good live stream. Hopefully it was informative for most of you. But uh, I want to get on that HF rig and operate some HF and get some contacts for field day. That's uh, 
one of the most exciting parts for me. I'm Ben Bramlett. My call sign is K7BEN. I'm the um, technical committee chairperson for the Jacksonville Range Association, the, the group that owns this YouTube channel and um, we have multiple groups out here today. That's another great thing about field day is you get, um, you know, where there's a group, at least in our Northeast Florida area, there's kind of a group that's for the beaches. There's a couple different groups that are for the uh, Jacksonville Metro area. There's Orange Park, the city of Orange Park, which is kind of a, in a different county, but close to Jacksonville. And all these groups come together to make this happen in, in one day. So there's, and despite having individual groups, and we're all we're all amateur radio operators at the end of the day, and we come together to to make things happen, and that's really great. So. And the Jacksonville Range Association has a website, newly revamped website actually, and um, got some folks working hard on that to get it looking really professional and informational and that is uh, our club call sign which is W4RNG so phonetically that's whiskey for Romeo November golf dot org so W4RNG dot org so you can go to that website which uh, should be in the description of the video to learn more about the the group here in Jacksonville we got um, Paul over here trying to make a satellite contact. So let's see he's on over there. I keep saying I'm going to cut the video, but there's just too much exciting stuff going on right now. So that bug's going to get you. So some stations don't do grids. So I guess he's Costa Rica, TI2. Yeah, it sounds like Costa Rica. You want to zoom in on the picture, see where he is? Let me zoom in. So that's the uh, footprint of the satellite we're working right now. And uh, this guy right here, we're going to give him a pass. He doesn't have to go to the gym today, okay? We're going to give him a pass on, on arm day. He can skip arm day today. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is a portable setup. Normally when they do this at the house, it's on a tripod or on a pole with a rotor, but nothing wrong with holding it by hand. That works too. All right, this time I really am going to cut it here because I want to get into the action. I appreciate everyone who's watched the video and joined. I want to keep the video kind of short too. Don't want to drag it on. And this is K7BEN, signing off.